Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I am Rob, and today we are going to be customising the car that's in this package. So this is a little commission job uh, by the chap uh, named James Payne uh, from Georgia, and he approached me via my Facebook page and said, Rob, I've got a few cars, um, you know, take a look at them. Do you think you could do something with it? And of course, I could. Um, or at least I think I can, or I hope I can. Uh, or certainly, I think the person that, that hopes I can the most is James. So um, I said to him, yeah, send it over. Um, you know, I'll have a go at it. And he said, oh, anything else that you want uh, that will sweeten the deal? And, um, you know, he seems like he's a, he's a collector of all things, kind of cars and motorbilia. And, uh, you know, he's he seems to have quite a few cool cars and he showed me pictures of them and I'm pretty jealous but uh, I said oh if you've you know if you've got any kind of old license plates knocking about um you know I've got quite a collection now of uh, of US uh, uh, license plates and I said you know but I don't have a Georgia one so by all means put one in the package and I'll be more than happy so let's see what we got so this open up so we have two license plates so how cool are these I wonder whether you know you guys in the US think these are cool um, or whether it's just people that are not in the US you know the UK license plates are very plain and boring and for me to see these it just makes it so much um, so much fun um, this one he showed me a few pictures and I said look I'm born in 1983 I'd love to have that one and uh, yeah that is very cool I like that and we have one with some nice colors on it the Georgia that is wicked look at a shine on that so these will be going up on my wall um, alongside my other collection I've yet to put them on the wall I'm just kind of building it up and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to doing that now and on to the car in question so what do we have so it's a larger scale this is a Matchbox Super Kings Plymouth Grand Fury from 1979 so this is 40 years old now and it's been over painted something on the top here perhaps it was a taxi or maybe a police car I'm guessing a taxi because the yellow paint appears to be the original it was then painted in red and then painted with a house uh, painting brush in green coming around back some nice bit of chrome oh, the boot lid or the trunk lid there opens up very nice red interior I'm guessing it it had either a tow hook or something at the back here so I'll have to investigate that wheels are in relatively good condition on the sides looks like a bit of wear on the bottoms here maybe I'll replace those or have a look to see if I can get those back up and running but the interior seems to be good yeah so you got the yellow on on the inside of the uh, the doors there and what does that say it's just got some letters there but uh, my biggest concern is the windscreen or the windshield as you guys in the US call it um, I've read about using brake fluid and I've never used it myself before but perhaps today's the day to do that but first things first, I'm going to get this on the rotisserie, take a picture of it before I do anything further, and uh, we can kind of set the video up and start the video as, uh, as we normally do. 
Okay, so we have a switch now to the standard kind of voiceover after it's finished. And I'm really excited for you guys to actually see this one. Um, I just sent um, a kind of teaser picture uh, to James. And uh, we're just kind of having a little backwards and forwards uh, on the messaging system via Facebook. But there was something that he just mentioned that I thought I would read out. And it reads, uh, funny, when I was a kid, that little car was always a turd. Uh, but I like the size of it and the way it rolled, so I played with it a lot. I think I got it at a thrift store or a yard sale on RAF Lake and Heath when I was there circa 1986. So it's been across the pond and back quite a few times. Uh, so hopefully this is the the last time it's come back to the UK. You know, I've hopefully you guys agree that I've customise it quite nicely and I'm going to be sending it back to the US for its final trip uh, hopefully to be put into some kind of display cabinet uh, for the rest of its days but here we are I've uh, drilled out the uh, or kind of removed the flange or the flanges uh, or the flanges um, I don't know what the plural for flange would be but anyway there's four on this car and uh, I've tapped and drilled and we're ready to rock on that uh, on that casting. The base here, a little bit of rust on the kind of wheel retaining uh, piece there, but you know it's not too bad. A little bit of paint underneath, which is a bit of a bummer. We we've kind of uh, missing the tow hook, which is not a bad thing. I had a look at some pictures. It's an ugly old thing, so it would have been coming off anyway. But uh, yeah, it's kind of done half the job for me. A little bit of I guess carpet hairs and clothing over the years from the eight well 40 years worth of stuffs we got most of the chrome missing and over paint on the front and rear bumpers there but yeah quite a heavy uh, mess of paint on here now the uh, door retaining piece bit of a pig to take out but eventually I do get it out um, and there's like an area in here that which we'll try and tidy up and obviously uh, paint that later on. But I need to get this glass out. Held in by its own little four kind of uh, uh, mushroomed over heads or rivets. As you can see, just trying to push it out there, but it's not coming. So I'm just going to take the uh, heads of these off. And here we are, just putting the uh, car in frame there. Normally I'd edit out such things, but we'll leave it in there today. You know, I'll try and make it look as swift as possible, but, you know, it is what it is, right? So here's the uh, the windscreen here. I'm just checking, because of course I can't see from the outside, bearing in mind it's covered in layers of paint. Uh, but I'm just going over the inside of the uh, the kind of glass section here. And I spot, unfortunately, a large crack in the rear. And even though I have a large crack in the rear, uh, in this casting, it is not welcome. And I was a little bit bummed about this, thinking, you know, do we clean it up? Do we leave the crack in? Um, you know, I've kind of was thinking about it putting it to one side really whilst you know trying to crack on with the rest of the casting but knowing that I'll have to make some decision later on but uh, with the doors there that are relatively easy to come out the boot or the trunk lid there it's not going to be coming out if I take this out it's going to be a pig to get it back in or it will never kind of sit right so made the kind of uh, decision to leave that in place and also at this stage left that area in place as well so let's get the uh, main body here into my foot long hot dog jar and uh, someone commented recently you know clean your jar up so we can see inside it I clean it up probably I don't know maybe every five or six goes but uh, yeah so this is a fresh you can see straight through it uh, quite a lot of boiling water into this one and a, gently because we're quite close to the top of the uh, glass would you believe 
uh, just gently place in a couple of tablespoons of caustic soda. You can see where it only takes a little bit, and uh, yeah, getting the uh, cleaning the spoon off, uh, getting it real fizzing up. But uh, I don't really want to touch this. There's a lot of boiling water with caustic solution in there, so kind of left that for a while. But um, whilst that is doing its thing, I'll take my warm water and chuck all the uh, the plastic parts here and uh, get them cleaned up. Yep, that ain't going to fit. I'll have to do that separate. And actually, I've followed um, Danny's kind of instruction. Um, Danny's die-cast disasters, of course. And what he does to get the chrome off of these, which I've always been really too scared to do, uh, but he uses a smaller jar, um, kind of, I guess, just lukewarm water or tap kind of warm water with a small amount of caustic soda and uh, yeah it really did do the trick so uh, thanks for to uh, Danny for um, obviously that tip now look into the glass section here like I say, we've got that nasty crack there. And I was, you know, bearing in mind, I've got well over 2,000 castings now. I remembered picking up or kind of receiving, I must admit, it was a few months ago now. I can't remember. But I do remember having another casting that was in, you know, perhaps not as bad a condition, uh, but certainly a condition where I could take, well, I rummaged for that glass section and thankfully no crack. So we'll be using that today. And as you can see here, the green paint has come off. It looks like, I don't know, Slimer's Wee Wee, should we say? <laughs> um, wee Wee. Um, I don't know whether you kind of uh, would use that in the US, but yeah, urine is uh, the correct terminology. But anyway, moving on. Uh, the base section there it really cooled down at this point but i thought i'll put the base section in as well just to kind of take off the uh, remnants of the paint that was underneath and as you can see it really did do the job without any damage to the plastic so happy with that and uh, quite nice to actually see almost that the kind of i guess the casting in its original yellow color um, of course that's still got to come off but it was quite nice perhaps to see it one last time in its original colour but uh, I'm going to turn my attention with the heavy duty paint stripper and uh, yeah, get that down into the uh, bare metal here. So you can see on the top where I've, you could kind of, I guess you could see the one that I'm pointing to, it's like pushed in or indented. Um, which meant it was then kind of dented out, if you can imagine, on the top side. So I've really had to take away a bit of metal uh, to smooth that out. And I've been using this file. And then I'll switch it up to the uh, different grades of sandpaper to uh, take out then all the scratches that I've now put into it. Probably spent an hour just in uh, sanding that roof, would you believe? But uh, to fill in the holes, I want to use this epoxy putty. And I've tried to use this a couple of times, if you remember rightly, on the uh, Beetle recently. And it kind of cracked and broke off. So I don't like it. And that was a thumbs down for that. And I've thrown it in the bin. And I'm going to rely on this JB Weld, which has seen me good. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for JB Weld. And like I say, I've uh, taped it from underside and 
left it overnight for this JB Weld to go off. And it's the following day and we've rubbed it back down again and I think you'll agree that looks pretty good. I've added some kind of additional glues underneath just to help hold it in position uh, but otherwise yeah really happy with that. Polished up the rest of the casting as well and taken off any little extra kind of burrs that have been left. But it was only really at this point that I noticed that in the past someone had probably stamped on top of this um, and of course I can't leave it like that so I'm using my little handy hammer plus the strength in my hands uh, to try and bend this out and uh, make it equally straight on both sides and I think you could agree that's uh, that's come along quite nicely So just moving a few bits to the side. We're going to be using the uh, candy inks today. And uh, we'll start off with the uh, base of the premium black in the uh, Vallejo. Um, and then just reaching out for a... Uh, I want to do a gold. And that's not the right gold, it's the air. And then my camera decides to cut off. But we're using the uh, green stuff world um, green. And this is the first coat of black going on. And then I'll do the cover of the gold. And you know this video was going to be long enough as it is. So certain things I've had to or wanted to kind of cut out and concentrate on really. Especially the main casting of this car. Being a commission, perhaps I, I don't know whether I do it to myself. Uh, but because it is a commission and I want and you know James on this occasion has come to me uh, having seen my videos I want this to be the best car that I've done and I want to you know obviously showcase what I can do for others as well uh, but I always put that extra pressure on myself and put in you know additional effort to make sure it is as good as I can possibly do there we are, so I've painted the full cast in there in gold. It looks great in gold. Uh, but then we're going to go with this uh, green candy. And just showing you the door section here. Quite difficult, I guess, in a way to paint part of the car off of the main casting. I.e., you know, the layers of green that you put on these doors. I've got a match with the main casting, otherwise the doors are obviously going to stick out like a sore thumb. But uh, I think I've done it. I think I've done it pretty good. And like I say, so now we've painted the whole casting in green. I'm going to go over it with the X22 uh, Tamiya Clear, and I should probably at this stage take out um, shares in Tamiya Clear because the amount of clear that has gone on this car is unbelievable. And uh, yeah, so it's been a been probably, I don't know, three or four heavy coats, because I wanted this thing to shine. But I will be rubbing down this uh, roof section now, and it's going to be getting a white roof. But before I paint the white... Um, I've never tried this before, but a few guys have mentioned if you kind of, once you've actually taped it up, um, what I didn't want to do is, of course, for the white to go under the tape. Because by this point, I'd put in hours and hours of, of time into this paint job. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was for, of course, the uh, white to go underneath. So I put the clear first before putting the uh, the white on there and I was biting my nails in fear that when I took off this uh, masking tape it would run and it didn't it was perfect it was beautiful and I was happy but anyway all the other extra bits and pieces I'll run through now like I say this is a long video in itself so you know we've done the standard clean up this um, window section here 
I kind of opened up a little bit on these top holes to allow for the glue that's on the underside. Of course it got the uh, Pledge Revive It treatment. The bright red interior I've toned down with a bit of a, a red with a kind of black uh, mixture almost close to brown and then gone over it with a, uh, a dark wash the wheels um, they've been given a semi-gloss uh, lacquer finish to the tires and then re-chrome the center wheels so this is the rear bumper now which uh, you can see where I've held it to re-chrome the rear bumper and add in some red rear lights. Same again with the front there. All nice new chrome but with some white headlights and uh, amber front indicators. The underside I painted with, um, it was a metallic black, more of a kind of titanium colour. And I went with the dry brushing, again kind of learned from Danny. Um, to highlight a lot of those, uh, uh, you know, all the axles and underside of the engine and a lot of stuff going on there. So wanted to highlight that. And then the kind of the main cast in here, the kind of, like I say, this is the jewel. This is the beauty. This is probably my favourite car that I've ever done. It's certainly the car that I've put most hours and effort and care and attention into. So there we are. And then the doors. There's some further details I'll be adding off camera again. But uh, here's a little reminder of what she did look like. And this is the result. So it's all back together. Some additional details you can see uh, at the front and the rear of the side here. The uh, turn signals. A little bit of chrome in the door handles. Also a bit of chrome on that. Um, Grand Fury badge down in the... Uh, in the front of course everything together just about see where I cut out the tow bar and I put in some um, some plastic which I call it the styrene which uh, yeah I did do off camera again but coming around to the other side what I'll do is just at the end of this video um, I'll show some different angles um, the inside and the underside so you'll have a better kind of viewing uh, off of this. Oh, one thing I did do, uh, a bit of chrome on those window wipers, which is a first. But anyway, let me take this opportunity to thank my amazing patrons. Obviously, I've got to say a big thanks to James Payne. Um, you know, you. I, I hope you like this one, mate. Uh, it will be coming across the pond to you soon i'm gonna let it kind of i guess settle and fully dry fully harden uh before i send it off last thing i want to do is for me to uh damage it in transit so if you'll bear with me for a few days but yeah you can probably see you know the scowl there i've got quite big hands but you can see the scowl you can see the details a little bit more the interior there i think looks perfect against this green the shine probably a little bit better. So you got the underside there with everything in. Yeah, really happy with this one, guys. Hopefully you are too. Make sure to like the video. I'd appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.